Hey, it's Matt of Farm For All, and today I just want to talk about why everything should be on contour, even if you're not making swales and terraces. So when I first got onto the property and or even before then, I imagined lots of swales in my design. I mean, after all, that's what you're supposed to do with perp permaculture, right? Just put swales everywhere. But the reality is that most of this property is too steep for swales. Above, I believe it's about 20% grade, swales become more of a risk than a benefit. They increase the risk of flooding and landslides, especially in our heavy clay that has a tendency to get waterlogged. It's, it's a huge risk to put swales where they don't belong. Terraces are a better option out here, although even that'll be tricky with some of the slopes that I'm working with. But then I discovered the work of Craig Sponholtz and his mentor, Bill Zedike. And that's when I started to realize that swales aren't the be all and end all of working with water and working with contour. Let me show a couple of concrete examples of how I'm using contour and then I'll get back into the theory and the work of Bill Zedike and Craig Sponholtz. So, this line right here is perfectly level, perfectly on contour. I've uh, used my A-frame level here, and there are lots of videos on how to put together an A-frame level. I'm not going to get into that, but it's definitely a useful tool and one you should make for yourself. And so I'm just measuring out this contour line with my A-frame level. And then I'm going in with my spading fork, sticking it in and just wiggling it back and forth and pointing it out. I'm not turning over the soil because I want to maintain the root structure and the microbiology that's in the soil. But I just want to open up a little slot where I can plant what's going to be a row of peas. So that last shot was down at the bottom of the garden and as you could probably tell it hasn't really filled in with vegetation very well since the property was clear cut and uh, that means it's a spot where I do need to be capturing a lot of water and sediment. Now I'm up at the top end of the main garden up above I don't know if you can see it behind me, it's the pond back there. And go ahead and do a quick turn. If you can see that, that's, that's the top of the slope that we're on. And well, let me just turn the camera around and I'll show you. So there's the slope I was talking about. All of this, all of this, just filled with grass and other plants because, of course, this, this slope is the main drainage that drains into the pond. And so this is where a lot of the water on the property is flowing through. And so I knew this would be a good spot to plant things that I would not be able to irrigate but would need a decent amount of water in order to produce a good crop. So, if you look here, actually, let me step around to the other side so you can really see it. So, a few weeks ago I had a, my friend Ian come out and help mark out the contour with these sticks. We didn't do just one. There's this one here. I'm 
if we come a little bit further, there's this one here. And there's one still further right here. So the idea here, block back down to this first one is that first we've placed sticks on on contour and now I'm raking all of the dead grass and weeds that overwintered here up to the line that the sticks are on and so what's going to happen is when Water flows down the hill, down here. It's gonna hit all of this mulch and sticks and everything else that I pile here. And it's gonna help diffuse and slow down the water. And that'll help sink it in. No swales required, just having any kind of obstacle in the way is gonna help. And so the ultimate plan for this is I'm basically going to be a Ruth Stout potato bed on contour and what I'm going to do is just I've left enough space in between these rows here that I can get a full swing with the scythe. Now this isn't super even ground so it's a little bit closer in some places and a little bit further in other and that's that's just how it is with contour so i i made sure that the whole way across i could get a decent swing with the with the scythe and then that'll be further mulch to go on top of this and then every few feet i'm gonna plant potatoes i'm doing andean uh, potatoes from true seed and then in addition to potatoes, I'm going to start planting out these contours with trees. So things like hazelnut and chinkapin are some of my high value staple crops that I want to get planted in here. I might do some fruit in here, but I'm mostly planning on doing fruit on other spots in the property just because most of the fruits that I'm growing are magnets for deer and this this is not a safe place for them but yeah you can see i haven't i haven't finished raking all the mulch down yet but I'll rake this down and then as as the season progresses i'll be able to size this and add more mulch on top and that's going to end up killing all of the the weedy stuff growing here notice that I'm not, I'm not taking out any of the perennials that are growing here. I'm leaving them in place as much as possible. If they're really in the way, I'll move them. But for the most part, I'm keeping them. Like this fern, it's probably gonna die being in full sun, but it's gonna stay there as long as it wants. Here's some of the dug fir that was replanted. And of course it'll stay here and the things that I plant will just grow around it. The only thing that I'm actively moving is you can see this giant patch of Oregon grape that's just in the way. So I'm digging these guys up slowly but surely. And the plan for these, if you will follow me this way, is to bring them all down here. Back in the ground. I already started sticking a few in here. And the idea with that is just, I already have the Oregon grape. They're not in a good spot now, but if I put them here, they'll help be, I mean, leaves are pokey. They don't feel good. So I want to get a nice barrier here that'll prevent deer from walking through as much as possible. And I'll also fill it in with aromatic herbs that'll also help deter things from walking through here. 
just so I can kind of direct the wildlife to where I would like them to be rather than where I don't want them to be. So what I really love about Zildite, Bill Zedike's work is that even though he's working in the American Southwest primarily in places that are effectively desert and can't mess around with water, he's not using swales at all, he's not using terraces at all. Instead, he's carefully stacking rocks and brush in order to control the flow of the water. So, he's got a few different techniques that he uses. A uh, technique that he calls a zuni bowl that's for kind of like water that's dropping off of uh, an edge and it's picking up quite a bit of speed. He's got one rock dams that are slowing water flows through valleys. He has media lunas which are designed to kind of span a valley and disperse the water in an alluvial fan. But the basic principles at play in his work are to put an obstruction in the way of water, make it level so that the water spreads along the obstruction, and just the act of putting an obstruction in the way slows and disperses the water as well as catching any sediment that's flowing downhill and any seeds and in his case he's not vegetating anything he's setting up these structures and topsoil and seeds are flowing down on the water getting caught by the barrier he's created and then those seeds because they're not being washed further down the hill end up sticking around and sprouting and then all the vegetation that's coming up along the structures that he builds traps more water and more sediment that's trying to flow off of the property. And even though I'm not stacking rocks like he often does, and even though I'm not stacking massive logs like he often does, just by having this vegetation that I'm planting on contour and this mulch that I'm planting on contour, or placing on contour rather, it's, it's gonna, the water's gonna hit it, and rather than being a big heavy flow, it's gonna break the water up and disperse it. And also, because the plants are putting down roots along contour, it gives it a nice big line where the water's gonna hit, slow down, and sink in. All without using swales, all without using terraces. Now, I do have a few examples on the property of how Bill Zedek's principles work in nature. And it isn't just a human design, it's the way nature repairs fast flowing water. Let me show you a couple of those. Eh, maybe just one. I've got one good example I think to show you. So the landowner set up this drainage to take water away from the barn and it's doing a pretty good job of that and also causing massive erosion because anytime you have fast moving water it takes soil and organic matter with it. But the interesting thing is there's this massive rock right here in the way that you can barely see because all of these grass seeds have ended up getting caught here as they were trying to flow down the hill. And now it's nice and vegetated right here just where this rock is blocking the flow of water. And now the water flow uphill from this is starting to slow down and more vegetation is popping up. And that's, that's the basic principle behind Bill Z. Dyke's work. Slow the water down, catch the topsoil, catch the seeds, and let nature repair the damage that's been done. So those are the basic concepts behind Bill's work. And it's been really inspiring because when I first got out here, I 
was thinking, man, I need an excavator that I can't afford so I can dig all of these earthworks that are going to be an eyesore. And now that I'm looking at the slope, a lot of the slope just won't work with swales. Bill has given me ideas for things that I can do at a human scale, things that one person with hand tools can do. Even if I wanted to dig swales, it would take me the rest of my life. The rest of my life I'd be digging swales. But instead, by planting vegetation on contour, I'm having most of the same benefits of a swale, unless you're trying to hold water to actively irrigate with, which I'm not. I'm trying to set up my systems to be irrigated passively. If you're not trying to store water for irrigation and you're just trying to get it into the ground, I think this is really the best way to do it. Mark out your contours, plant on them, and then let the vegetation do the work. Okay, now that I have this furrow on contour, the only thing left for me to do is grab some of my compost, drop it in the bottom here, and then got these, which are soup peas that were sent to me by Jan White. focus and I soaked them overnight now I'm just gonna place those every three inches or so and then come back in cover them up with compost after I get that done I'll come through and clear out some of these weeds that are going right up next to the furrow and that'll be it eventually I'll come through and Cover this with a layer of grass as mulch. And if you saw my previous video, I'll probably also use sticks to keep birds from pulling out my germinating seeds. That's been working really well. I'll uh, try to do an update on that as soon as the peas are big enough to be worth talking about. But yeah, that, that's it. A little bit of compost on the bottom, throw in your seeds, compost on top, walk away and let nature do its thing. All right guys, that's it for this video. I hate doing the whole YouTube spiel, but I am a small channel and it really does help out if you can like the video, subscribe, hit the bell, share the video, leave a comment, all, all of the usual YouTube BS. Um, just hit over 100 subscribers and as far as YouTube is concerned that means my content is worthless so if you think otherwise if you got any value out of this video then help me out do, do all the regular YouTube garbage and help me get seen by more people who can be helped out by the stuff that I'm doing here thanks have a good one guys